Does the gentleman from Arizona seek recognition? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move to suspend the rules and pass S-256, the Esther Martinez Native Languages Program Reauthorization Act. Uh, with the, cl the clerk will report the title of the bill. Senate 256, an act to amend the Native American Progra Programs Act of 1974 to provide flexibility and reauthorization to ensure the survival and continuing vitality of Native American languages. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Grajava, and the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Johnson, each will control South Dakota, each will control 20 minutes. Uh, the chair recognizes the gentleman from Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend the remarks and to insert extraneous material on the measure under consideration. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to urge my colleagues to support S-256, the Esther Martinez Native American Language Programs Reauthorization Act. The United States has a trust responsibility to support indigenous peoples in this country. The survival of, of indigenous peoples' language is fundamental to the success of native communities and the survival of traditional native cultures. The history of the United States, United States tells us the, about the deliberate efforts to eliminate indigenous peoples' languages and cultures through forced assimilation, boarding school forced attendance, treaties that have not been honored, and promises not kept. According to UNESCO, 74 native languages stand to disappear within the next decades. Scholars project that only 20 native languages will be spoken by the year 2050. The linguistic and cultural genocide is real and demands action. The Esther Martinez language program has been a tool that was created to address this stark reality. This language program is named in honor of New Mexico Tewa teacher and storyteller Esther Martinez, who is known and honored for her dedication and efforts in revitalizing her people's language. The Esther Martinez Initiative Fund immersion programs are successful in preserving and revitalizing native language to both to indigenous co communities, Alaskan Native, and Native Hawaiian students. Today, grants provided under Esther Martinez program have empowered Native communities to establish language immersion programs that are successfully reviving Native languages and improving Native economies. This grant has been used to develop curriculums rooted in Native language based on traditional values and beliefs in subject areas that obviously include language, mathematics, science, and social studies. Esther Martinez grants also support children's books in, in, in Native languages the development of language assessment tools, and the intergenerational programs to support regular use of native language with, with children at home. Importantly, they also provide funding to train native language teachers who use the language immersion curriculum developed by the tribe and or school. The powerful link between language and identity for native people is essential in the development of successful students and communities. These language immersion programs have proven to be the best model for the for developing fluent speakers and successful students. S-256 reauthorizes the Esther Martinez program for $13 million annually, increases the maximum duration of the grant, and the, reduces the number of program enrollees needed to qualify for a grant. The survival of la native language is fundamental to the success of native communities and the survival of traditional native cultures. I would like to, to thank my colleagues, Representative Lujan for and Senator Udall for leading the effort, the support of Representative Holland, and I urge my colleagues to support S2, S-256, the Esther Martinez Native American Language Program Reauthorization Act. Mr. Speaker, I, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Arizona reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from South Dakota, Mr. Johnson, is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I might consume. Gentleman's recognized. Hamatakipi. Greetings, my relatives. I'm honored to join the chairman, uh, my colleague from Arizona, to usher this important legislation through the House after its passage through the Senate. Now, South Dakota and Arizona both have rich Native American history and culture, and we are here tonight to celebrate, to cherish, and yes, to sustain that culture. 
The Esther Martinez Native American Languages Act was introduced in 2006 by my friend, Heather, uh, Heather, um, Heather Wilson, who uh, was a congresswoman from New Mexico before she moved to South Dakota. It's, uh, it's reauthorization, this reauthorization of her bill will empower Native American tribes to continue teaching languages like Lakota and Dakota to future generations. Let there be no mistake, there is pressing need for this work. Fewer than 1% of Lakota and Dakota Native Americans are fluent in either of those languages. That means there are just 2,000 Lakota and Dakota fluent speakers in the world. We're losing those speakers too quickly uh, because of old age. And their ranks have declined by 65% in the last 15 years. Unfortunately, it is not just Lakota and Dakota that are threatened. There are 175 native languages spoken in this country today, and there are estimates that 30 years from now, fewer than 20 will be spoken. Why does this matter? Why do we care? Why are we gathered here tonight for such a just cause? And it's because, Mr. Speaker, as we all know, language is the lifeblood of culture. Language opens a doorway for all of us, a doorway into understanding a people's, into understanding their past, and maybe most interestingly, understanding their future. That is powerful insight. Now, for example, uh, Lakota-speaking Native Americans may say, Metakyapi Oyasin, which means uh, we are all related. But this, to me, is the most fascinating uh, part about this, Mr. Speaker. You wouldn't just say that when you are around people with whom you are related. You would say that in a broader group of people to demonstrate an interconnectedness, part of a larger family, that we have similar values and dreams and fears. There is a human condition. Now, English doesn't quite have a phrase like that. The fact that Lakota does tells us a lot about the Lakota people. This program, uh, these dollars, are having an impact in Indian country. For years, Lakota was, along with dozens of other native languages, designated as severely threatened. Its status was recently changed to a reawakening language. That is an acknowledgement that projects funded by this program uh, projects that are working today in communities in South Dakota like Eagle Butte and Porcupine, they are making a difference. And so, Mr. Speaker, I would say, Palamea Yelo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I would reserve my time. Gentleman from South Dakota reserves the balance of his time. Gentleman from Arizona, uh, from, uh, Arizona is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my uh, pleasure to yield five minutes to uh, the gentleman from New Mexico. Uh, the leader in this effort on this legislation, uh, Mr. Lujan. Gentleman from New Mexico, Mr. Lujan is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in strong support of the Esther Martinez Native American Languages Programs Reauthorization Act. With the passage of this legislation, Congress has made monumental progress to affirm Native communities honoring their heritage by speaking the languages gifted to them by their creator. Today we recognize the only existing federal native language education grant programs. These programs give our first Americans crucial support to protect their languages from extinction. Today is a historic moment, a blessing, and I want to offer thanks to the people who made this achievement possible. We owe our deepest gratitude to Esther Martinez of Oqueoinge Pueblo who ensured Tewa is spoken across New Mexico. Her passion for her culture and tradition is what has brought us together today. To the educators who work every day to ensure native languages are here for future generations, thank you. I want to thank my colleague, Senator Tom Udall, who has made reauthorization of these programs a top priority for more than a decade and successfully secured passage of the legislation in the U.S. Senate. I would also like to recognize Congressman Grijalva, Mr. Chairman, for his leadership on behalf of tribes and native peoples. 
I'm deeply grateful for my colleagues, Congresswoman Holland and Tora Small, Chairman Young and Cole, Congresswoman McCollum, Gabbard, and Chairman Scott for joining together to ensure this legislation had its day on the House floor. I want to thank and recognize all the Pueblo, Apache, and Navajo leaders from New Mexico, including those in the gallery today. With the permission of her family, I'm honored to celebrate the legacy that Esther Martinez and her Pueblo have shared with the world. New Mexico boasts a rich history and diversity that includes 23 native nations and seven indigenous language groups found nowhere else on earth. Esther Martinez, a master educator and linguist, dedicated her life to the Tewa language, which today is spoken across six northern pueblos in my district and in Hopi Tewa in Arizona. As a child whose first language was Tewa, Mrs. Martinez attended a government-run Indian boarding school where nearly everything that made her a Pueblo woman was banned, including her language. Her experience is not unique. Generations of native families had their children torn from their arms bound for schools that forced English and Western education on Native students. Despite living through a period of overt racism with federal policies aimed at exterminating Native culture, Mrs. Martinez defied the odds by returning to Okeowinge. She raised her children and family to speak the Tewa dialect. Esther went on to teach many more as a linguist, school teacher, and the director of bilingual education for her Pueblo. Her legacy lives on in the sounds of Tewa being spoken in her community. Her son Tony and daughters Marie and Josephine are raising their children and grandchildren with Tewa in their homes. Her daughter Mercedes is a regular attendee at adult language classes taught by one of Esther Martinez's protégés. Her grandson, former Lieutenant Governor Matthew Martinez, a doctor of American Studies and American Indian Studies, advances his culture at the Santa Fe Museum of Indian Art and Culture. He's also teaching Tewa to his youngest son. Today we pass this legislation knowing that it will help Native communities protect their language for generations to come. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting this important legislation and I yield back the balance of my time. Chairman from uh, New Mexico uh, yields back the balance of his time. Members are, are reminded to refer to uh, uh, individuals in the gallery. A uh, gentleman from uh, Arizona reserves the balance of his time. A gentleman from South Dakota is recognized. Mr. Mr. Speaker, for 46 years, the 120,000 Alaskan natives in our country have had a champion working for them, fighting for them, advocating for them. He is the dean of this house. He is a former chairman of the Indian Affairs Subcommittee. Uh, I yield as much time as he might consume to the gentleman from Alaska. Gentleman from Alaska is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I unanimous going to revive and extend. And I'm Without Mr. objection. The Congressman, you do a great job. That was a great presentation. Very proud of you. Each person has spoken on this legislation really put it in context about Esther Martinez. The program was started in 2006. Uh, I happen to be a sponsor of that bill, co-sponsor. I watched it pass and become a reality. And it has worked. What we're doing is reauthorizing a program that allows a culture to be retained through languages. In Alaska, we have 20 native languages and 40 some odd dialects. And we have begun to bit back as the gentleman said, we lost that for a long period of time. The language is to keep the cultures together. It's important for the past, important for the present, and important for the future. The University of Alaska has had a program. Alaskan Language Center has worked very well since the 70s. We were well ahead of this program, and we want to continue it. We have an innovative Alaska Native Culture Charter School on Anchorage that teaches UPIC to all the students. So there is exchange, just not native, but between other races, so they understand the languages. I believe this is one of the best programs that we were able to achieve, and the funding still probably is still inadequate, but it's a continuation of good work by this Congress. I want to thank each one of you that has been particip participating in this, especially Mr. Lujan, Representative Lujan, 
Uh, I'm a little bit concerned, if I may. I don't want to speak about the other body, but we know who it is. They've taken Mr. Lujan's bill and uh, uh, sort of put their name on it, so we'll forgive them because we're going to get it done. This is good legislation. I'd also like to thank Mr. Representative Price, who co-chairs the American Language Caucuses with me. And uh, again, congratulations. Good legislation. Well done, Mr. Chairman. And let's continue to act. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman uh, yields back the balance of his time. A gentleman from uh, South Dakota is reserves. A gentleman from Arizona is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I yield two minutes uh, to the gentle lady from Minnesota, Ms. McCollum. Gentlewoman from Minnesota is recognized for two minutes. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of S-256, uh, the Esther Martinez Native American Languages Program Reauthorization Act. There are many critical needs in Indian country, and the federal government has an obligation to fill our trust and tribal responsibilities. This commitment includes reauthorizing the Esther Martinez Immersion Grants so that Congress ensures Indian students have the opportunity to study, to learn, and speak their tribal language. The National Conference of American Indians says, the National Congress, excuse me, of American Indians says it best, and I quote, a language encompasses and expresses a worldview shaped by centuries, in some cases tens of thousands of years, of experience, knowledge, practices, spiritual beliefs, and relationships between people, its neighbors, and its environment, which cannot be replicated in any other tongue. Language is paramount to one's identity. The gift of language allows a person to carry their culture from their ancestors to the present and on to the next generation to come. Esther Martinez grants have empowered tribes to establish immersion programs, making it possible for more tribal communities to maintain their native languages and pass along centuries-old cultural heritage. These grants will not only benefit Native American tribal nations across the country, but also Native Hawaiians, Native Alaskans, and Pacific Islander communities, giving them the ability to protect and rejuvenate indigenous languages. Without urgent action to reauthorize these grants, too many communities risk, the lose, risk losing their native languages, their ancestors. As Chair Emeritus of the Native American Caucus, I have worked to increase funding for Esther Martinez programs, and I will continue to make native languages and their preservation and education a priority. Mr. Speaker, as the 116th Congress moves forward, we must prioritize our federal trust and treaty obligations. We must do so in a way that respects native culture and strengthens native communities. Reauthorizing the Esther Martinez Native American Language Preservation Act brings us one step closer to this goal. I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting this legislation in the words of the Ojibwe, Magwitch, and I yield back. Gentlemen, yields back the balance of time. Gentleman from Arizona Reserves, gentleman from South Dakota is recognized. Mr. Speaker, uh, I would advise to you and the chairman that I have no further speakers and we'd be prepared to make closing remarks whenever appropriate. No, I'll be prepared to close when we Gentleman from uh, South Dakota, Mr. Johnson is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we are not here in this body to reauthorize feel-good programs. We are gathered here tonight not to reauthorize a feel-good program, but to authorize a program that works, that makes a difference. The evidence is clear. Students who participate in these programs, they do learn language skills. They also are more likely to graduate high school. They are also more likely to have high academic achievement. They are more likely to be successful in their communities. That is what the data tells us. We cannot let up now. These programs are working in a variety of states, in a variety of communities, and if we want a robust and healthy Native American culture in this country, we need to have a healthy and robust Native American language environment in this country. The Esther Martinez Native American Language Preservation Act is an important, a critical component uh, of that framework, of that environment. And so, I ask my colleagues, I, bese I beseech them tonight, to reauthorize this program that is doing so much good uh, throughout our country. I urge a yes vote, and uh, with that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back. Gentleman from South Dakota, Mr. Johnson, yields back the balance of his time. Gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Girehava, is recognized. Thank you very much, and uh, my colleagues across the aisle, and in particular, uh, my friend Mr. Young from the committee, uh, for his long, 
Uh, when I first came to Congress, this was one of the first bills that he sponsored, and uh, it was, I was very proud to vote for it then, and I encourage all my colleagues today to be very proud to vote for it now. Uh, the, the reauthorization, it is uh, $13 million, and it is an amount of money that goes very far in Indian country, an amount of money that uh, many could argue could be, should be more, but the point today is to reauthorize by reauthorization and that, in it, that seed money that is so important to, uh, to Native youth and, and, and children, I think we make a statement uh, as a Congress that we too join in reaffirming uh, the revitalization, the preservation of both language and culture among the first Americans in this country. That we say to them that what you bring as a person, as a tribe, as a people is vital to and enriches the fabric of this nation of ours. Uh, proud to be here. I urge all my colleagues to support it. It is a good piece of legislation that does good work and will continue to do good work. And I yield back the remainder of my time, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman from Arizona yields back the balance of his time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass Senate Bill 256? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table.